Uh, Bobby, first of all, how are you handling uh, all this? How has it been to be in quarantine? And how, how has it been to get on the same page as some coaches that you may have never met before because they're new to the staff? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, Bobby. Oh yeah. Um. Well, we do we do a um a fair job with the Zoom meetings. Uh, you know, trying to it's it's tough being that we can't be in the building right now with everybody, but we do a real fair job with the Zoom meetings and uh, understanding um, that you know it, this is what it is, and we got to make it work. We got to make it happen. So meeting the guys, you know, virtually and through text messages, through Instagram, talking to them, it's a uh, it, it's all very fairly simple. Mike Cunha. Yeah, uh, Bobby, I want to take you back to uh, last year. Play, I think you played in nine games last year, but basically your first few years played in every game. Um, how tough was it for you sitting out that much time being injured? I um, mean, it sucks. You know, no one wants to be hurt. Everyone wants to play. Everyone wants to get out on the field and, and help their team win. And, and, and you know, everybody, everyone feels like, you know, that, that they take the necessary steps to, to be ready for the season. And, um, you know, being sitting out that long, I'm, I'm itching to get back. And, um, you know, I, I just can't wait for the season to start myself right now. And I try not to, you know, dwell on the past and just look forward to what I'm to what's coming. Omar? Bobby, you, you always say the right thing when it comes to doing whatever the team asks you to do. But tell me why you think – um, going to safety or staying at safety is the right call for you as opposed to playing nickel or cornerback? Um, I'm a guy that can play all – I can play any place in the backfield, um, you know, with practice and with time, everyone gets better. And, you know, I, it's, not my, it's, it's not my decision to make decisions. My job is just to play football. So, um, you know, I love playing football and I love doing what I do, and I'm able to do it all. Chris Perkins. Hey, Bobby, uh, last season, mentality was so much of what made this team successful, buying into what Flo preached. And I'm wondering, how do you pass that on to the newcomers now when, for the most part, all you have are, are Zoom meetings? You don't have those team meetings. You're not in the weight room. You're not on the field. How do you pass along kind of the Flores way right now? Um, it, it, it's tough uh, being we're not around each other, but – you know, we know, we know that we'll, we'll come back uh, hopefully soon, hopefully sooner than later. And um, you're just going to have to be ready and you have to be – you got to hold yourself accountable to who to, to, to being a pro. You got to be a pro. And um, if you're not, you won't last. Adam Beasley. Uh, there's been some reports that uh, practice could resume as soon as a couple of weeks. Would you feel comfortable coming back to the facility and practicing in a couple of weeks? Uh, yeah, I, I feel comfortable. I know they're going to take the necessary precautions to keep us safe. And, uh, you know, I'm no doctor, so I can't tell you too much about the coronavirus, but I do know it's dangerous. And, you know, I know that they're going to take the, like I said, the proper steps to make sure that we don't, that we come back and we don't contract the virus or that we, we don't come back and we're sick. So I, I, I'm definitely excited for that. I'd be excited for that. Cam Wolf. Was good, Bobby. Um, I know you had a, a year of it, but I know from the draft, it was visible for a lot of people seeing Brian Flores and Chris Greer, two black guys at the, the front of your organization. What is it like from a player's perspective to kind of have, you know, two leaders that kind of look like you uh, in your organization? Um, for me, uh, it, it wouldn't be so much black and white, man. I've had black coaches. I've had white coaches. I've had mixed coaches. I've had, you know, I've had a uh, it, 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 there's no there's no such thing as black and white. It's just uh, people trying to win football games. And, you know, we do have two – Chris Greer and Coach Flo are black. And, um, and you know, I mean, you know, for the I, I guess for the culture, that's dope. But I don't see black and white, man, because you got you have to be able to adjust and you have to be able to adapt in this league. And regardless, they're black, white, Asian, no matter what they are, you got to be able to do as you're told. Joe Shad. Hey, Bobby, it's good to see you. Um, I noticed that ESPN had some uh, some computer rankings that came out. They said that their expectations for the Dolphins would be six wins and a 13.8% chance to beat the playoffs. I know we haven't even gotten back to practice yet, but with all the free agent additions and all the draft picks, 
How does that align with what you think is possible? Um, you know, I think we made some good picks. We made some good, had some good pickups in free agency as well. Um, but I, I'm not too big on, you know, looking at the ESPN, what they're talking about in March and April and May. Um, you know, we're just going to take it one day at a time and try to get better as a team. And, you know, hopefully by the time January, February rolls around, they'll be able to put their foot in their mouth. Soffit. What's going on, Bobby? Um, you know, you've been here before, Brian Flores. Uh, you've been in the mix with the team last season um, during the first year of the rebuild. With the new additions, uh, the excitement around the team and the new players, what do you think the rest of, of this uh, franchise effort has in store um, for now, next season, and in the future? Um, I mean, I, I'm not going to. I mean, it's, it, it, this is an exciting time of the year for every every team, for every all 32 teams in the league. This is an exciting time. This is a new start. It's a restart. No matter if you got a new coach, you got new players, you got a new scheme, you got a new playbook. No matter what it is, if, no matter what it is, it's a new start. 2019 doesn't matter. We, whatever y'all did in 2019, it doesn't matter. Um, so with Coach Flo coming in and implementing the things that he wants, you know, um, as a team, we got to understand that uh, if you want to win, this is like they, they want they want it done this way. And, um, and you know, we, in the season how we did last year, you know, hopefully, like like I said, like it, the last year doesn't matter. People talk about the momentum that we had and how we were doing so well. But, you know, it's going to be one game. When that, when that ball kicks off, no one's going to think about the last game we played in 2019 and the momentum from it. You're going to think about that game. You're going to be in that moment. Omar? Bobby, you, you uh, suffered two separate shoulder injuries last season. Um, obviously, injuries are part of the game of football. But what, what, what do you think that contributes to the fact that you're playing safety, or, or that wasn't a factor? The, the more physical side of the position wasn't a factor. The more, uh, so say it again. Come again. Do you think that playing a more physical position, playing safety, was a factor in the shoulder injury that you suffered? No. Why no. so? I mean, I, I, you, you, it's football. You know, you can get hurt doing anything, um, making a tackle, making a simple tackle. Sometimes the the most, the, the sometimes the easiest plays to make are the ones that hurt the most, are the ones that hurt the, hurt the most. So, um, you know, it's just football. Things happen. I, I went down, made a tackle, and you know, I end up hurting myself. So that's just that's football, and I I'm not too stressed about it. Adam Beasley. Uh, Bobby, I think you were out in the community yesterday. Can you get a share us share with us what you did? Yes, putting on a uh, an event with Farm Share. Uh, we fed. Well, we did a drive through pickup, uh, drive through food pickup. Um, the cars would come through with their trunks open. Um, we we fed. It, it would be food enough for a week: fruit, rice, chicken, all kinds of orange juice, uh, chips, and it, it'd be enough food for a week. And uh, it was a really, really special event. There was a there was a couple people sitting there from midnight on. It started at eight o'clock. So it just shows you like the people that are, that it shows you how people are in need at this time. And, um, you know, it was really heartwarming. And I, I, I was thankful to be able to do it. I was with Commissioner Diaz and the mayor of Hialeah. And, um, you know, we were there for an hour, an hour and a half, maybe two hours till we filled up all the cars and got rid of all the food. And it's just something that, you know, that I wanted to do. I wanted to give back and find a way to do something throughout this time. Cam Wolf. Bobby, what's up? Uh, how are you kind of going through this offseason period? I know there's, you know, being on the field and doing your own work is not the same as being at OTAs. Are you worried about, you know, what shape people are going to be in and what work people can do on their own versus, you know, having the typical team OTAs? Uh, yeah, you know, it's definitely going to be a little different. People may, I mean, it's definitely going to be a little different. Um, you know, being that we're all not in the building and guys are training at home, guys are training with their trainers or, and even those, even those training rooms, maybe even those weight rooms and, and trainers may be closed for now for a little while. So, it's definitely going to be a different, but you got to, like I said, you got to, you're a pro, um, no matter if it's your first year, no matter if it's your sixth year, no matter if it's your 10th year, uh, you got to be a pro and understand you got to hold yourself accountable because when it comes and when training camps hit, the sun ain't going to hold back. So. Mike Cunha. I know it's a little bit of old news, Bobby, but just kind of from a cornerback's perspective, not having to worry about Tom Brady in the division. What's the question? How do you feel about having to play against him twice a year? Oh, man, he's, he's one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. And, uh, you know, no one's going to take that from him. 
Um, you know, him moving out of the division, everyone knows it, it you know, it's, it's a big deal, but, you know, it's still going to be football. It's still going to be, there's still going to be New England. We're still going to be Miami. There's still going to be Buffalo. It's still going to be New York. So you're going to have to be, you have to beat teams, good football teams. And, um, you know, just, they just, uh, they just, they unfortunately lost, you know, one of the best quarterbacks to ever play the game. But, you know, this, we know it's still going to be, it's still, it doesn't matter like who, who's the quarterback, who's the, who's the, who, who's the running back, who, it doesn't matter. It just, it depends on what we're doing and how we're going to, how we're going to be focusing going to every game. Joe Shad. Bobby, I wanted to um, make sure I remembered this correctly. I think the you had shoulder surgery since the last time we saw you. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. And so where are you in your recovery from that? Are you completely back? And what have you been able to do in terms of workouts and football? I'm um, just about everything. It's um, it, It's been about – so I had surgery in November, so – you're looking at about six months, five, six months now. Um, you know, I'm coming along very well. Uh, we're doing the right things uh, with the, with the, with the rehab and taking the precautions for the season to make sure I'm ready. All right, guys, we're going to do two more. Chris Perkins. Hey, Bobby, as a player, how do you strike a balance between Tua and Ryan Fitzpatrick, knowing that Tua is the exciting new player, perhaps the future, but Fitz did so many good things for you guys last season. How do you strike that balance? Um, it's not I, I wouldn't say strike that balance. It is a good balance because Fitz is a good Fitz is a good player. He's also a good leader. And uh, he helps he helps everyone. You know, um he, he he's a guy that's been around a long time. He's seen a lot of football and um, you know, he he's gonna do nothing but, you know, elevate that room and elevate the quarterback room. So, um, and, you know, being that we drafted Tua, he's a good player as well. You know, um, he's going to come in. It's going to be a learning curve. It's the league, and hopefully he learns fast. But, you know, regardless of um, – I feel like, you know, fit, fits Tua, like that whole – that entire room is a good room and with Josh and everyone that, that – that it's going to elevate everybody's game. Alan, final question. Hey, Bobby, how you doing? Um I wanted to get your thoughts on the additions of Byron Jones and Noah Benogany to the secondary and what you know about Byron and how, how good the secondary can be with, with the guys you now have in place. Um, I know I know they're two good players. Um, I've seen Byron over the years. He's in my class, my draft class. So I've seen him over the years play with really good football. And uh, even with the Rook coming in, he's going to have a lot to learn. And it's going to be tough because there's no OTAs and everything. But, you know, he'll get it down. He's a smart kid. And, and, you know, I, I'm not going to make any accusations or any predictions on how good our secondary is going to be. We're just going to take it each and every day and try to collect and, and try to just gain chemistry with each other and try to be the best version and try to be the best uh, version of the Miami Dolphins. That's all. We just want – we want to be – we don't want to just sit, sit back and say how, how, how great we're going to be. We're just going to try to get better each and every day, and we'll just let it, we'll just let it fall in place.